I wanted to wear something that was going to like feel Oklahoma-y. This was the closest I could get. I don't know if I'm giving more gay lumberjack though. Anyway, Oklahoma. I have a lot of thoughts on this revival. This musical revival, originally designed for an in the round space, premiered on Broadway in the Circle in the Square, transferred to the Young Vic in a similar staging pattern, and is now in a front-on facing West End theatre, The Wyndhams, for a limited West End engagement until September. Oklahoma is not a musical that I was overly familiar with. The most I know of it is actually from this production itself. And I think this production is very hard not to admire. Whether you like everything that is presented on stage, it is so brave and it's so bold that you can't help but respect it. But why? What is so interesting about this version of Oklahoma? What does this musical do that feels so different? Let's find out. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, discussions, video essays, and if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out. It helps out the channel. But let's just get into it. The review for this was embargoed. Um, if you don't know what that means, I, 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 I was not allowed to review it until now. So I'm reviewing it now. And I'm, I, I've been bottling up opinions. And I'm going to tell you these opinions right now. Let's go. I'm going to try and avoid big spoilers in this review. But I will be touching on a couple of the different techniques used and just not really going into too much detail about it. So if you're still curious about Oklahoma and want to go see it, the entire experience is not laid out for you in this video. I think there are so many powerful moments within Oklahoma. I think if you take these moments by themselves, they are some of the strongest moments that I have seen on a stage in a very long time. The way that they stage Paul Judd is dead, they gunshots that they use, the ending and the way that they reinvent that, and the different lighting techniques that they use to build stage imagery. It's all so well thought out and extremely well intentioned. Let's take these one by one. The way that they stage Poor Judd is Dead, if you told me how they did it, I would look at you with a face of utter confusion. But in this song, they decide to stage a lot of the sequence in pitch blackness. Every single light in the theatre turns off and you are sitting there for an extended period of time in pitch black darkness. And I think these sequences and the places where they use this really helps to build that sense of unease. These blackouts are used in moments of the musical where there's a lot of tension building, where there's two characters meeting who have clear conflicts. And to take away that sense of being able to see what's going on, to be able to experience everything, really makes you hone into the words that the actors are saying. This actual script of the musical and how powerful this actually is. That is something that worked wholeheartedly for me. Another thing that worked really well was the different senses of lighting. The imagery that they used throughout the play, the shadows that they put onto the wall, and what this says about the characters. It's very well intentioned and you can see the different thought processes of the director through these creative decisions. The sound design is very interesting. There's a lot of gunshots, there's a lot of loud noises. They come in places where you're very much not expecting them. If you are scared of gunshots or like loud noises, this might not be the musical for you. And then there's the ideas that I don't think work. And mainly I feel that these are specific to the space. These are specific to the actual area that this show has been moved to. When I was watching this from the Royal Circle, this felt very much like a front row show. This is a show that you want to be right there in the action for, you want to be immersed. And I think that comes from where it was originally staged. The Young Vic, the Circle in the Square, these are quite intimate spaces. And when the musical strips back a lot of the drama and plays it very naturalistic, because this plays Oklahoma as if it was a play instead of a musical. A lot of it is very naturalistic. 
And you see this from the style, you see it in the choreography and the acting choices. I think the ending specifically, where they really strip it back, I don't think the impact of that carries 100% to the royal circle. I get what they're doing with this, I get the ideas behind it, I understand the intention, I just don't think it carries in a bigger space. I think with a lot of these big ideas, you are going to love them and you're going to hate them. This feels like a very Marmite show. It is not the cheery, happy, uh, hoedown Oklahoma that you might be expecting. It is 100% not the film. It is dark, it is gritty, it does not shy away from really highlighting the dark material in the show. And I think that's one of the reasons why it is so powerful, it is so interesting. And I honestly don't feel like it should have gone any other way. Despite my problems with the show, despite me feeling like it, it doesn't really work in the bigger space sometimes, I think it's so bold and so interesting and so... And there is no other word than brave. It's so brave with its ideas that even if I don't think an idea worked, I can understand why it was done. I can see the thought process of the director and I can understand why it would work for some other people or even if I was sitting slightly further closer to the stage. I think that was a lot of my thought process for the show as well, that I, I do wish I had seen it in the in the round space. I think it would be unfair to say that the show doesn't work in the Wyndham Theatre. I think it would be unfair to say that it doesn't work at all because there are a lot of things that do work in this space. There's a lot of the imagery and a lot of the ideas carry over very, very well. This is not a new way of staging Oklahoma. This production did go on a US tour and used a very similar staging style to this production with it being in Proscenium Arch. So this is not a new thing and you can tell that a lot of the kinks have been worked out a little bit, but there's still a couple of things that do slightly get at me. Let's talk about the choreography quickly, specifically a dance sequence towards the start of Act 2. This is not a cast of dancers, this is not a dance show, there is really no choreographed or like specifically what you would expect when I say choreographed dancing. It is not anything goes. It's not 40 Second Street. It's it's not a dancey show. They've not given it that style but where there is choreography with our main cast of characters it's very naturalistic. It's very much what you would expect a group of cowboys and farmhands and like people living in Oklahoma to go and dance like in a village hall. I feel like the choreography does work with the style of the play. Where I don't think it works as well is with the actual dream sequence. For this dream sequence we get a more contemporary style of dance, we get a more interpretive style of dance with a specific cast member who is separate from the entire production who is there just to do this dance. This sequence is interesting. There's a lot of interesting ideas in here and I enjoy it for the most part. It's an interesting way to bring you into act two. However, pacing wise, I think it is a little bit too long and a little bit too disconnected from the actual action of the show. I think pace is another one of the play's issues. I think it is a little bit too slow moving to begin with. The show only really comes to life and really sells you the second we get I can't say no. I'm trying to pronounce that right, but I can't pronounce it right without going into an American accent. So I just go, I can't say no. <laughs> I think after I can't say no, the rest of the pace of the first act and after the dance sequence for the second act, the musical is paced very well. But I do feel those sequences drag ever so slightly and it takes just a, just a little bit too long to really sell you on the show. But those criticisms are more personal preference rather than something that I would say damages the show in a larger sense. Let's talk about this cast because they do an incredible job. Arthur Darville leads the show amazingly. He has a clear presence. He's got the naturalistic style down to a T. 
I really enjoy how this production doesn't really paint any of the characters as completely evil or completely good. Curly is an interesting character, he is flawed. To a modern sense, he has some flawed beliefs. You aren't exactly rooting for him. I think Darville plays with this perfectly, he has this clear stage presence. His vocals are really, really strong. I think he leads the cast incredibly. Anushka Lucas plays the role of Laurie, and I feel unfortunately this character is a little bit underwritten, just because of the time period that the show was made and the ideals of the world that she comes up in. As a character, she is a little bit... she doesn't have as much presence as the others. But I think what this production does and the acting choices that Lucas makes really give this sense of Laurie's embarrassment. Say, for example, the scene where they are betting on her lunch. At a box social, each of the female characters make a box of food and the men bid on them. And there is a betting war between Judd and Curly. And the way that this is staged is really interesting. We see front and centre Laurie, who just looks so uncomfortable, so embarrassed, so destroyed and completely and utterly unable to say anything. I think this is an interesting way to bring the character and the acting choices here that Lucas makes really do flesh out what is essentially a character who doesn't really get much say in the musical. Patrick Vale plays Judd and again in a similar vein to Curly I love that they don't play him as a true antagonist. He's very antisocial, he's very within himself. He's shy, he's nervous, he's he's not a good character, he's not a good person, but the way that they play it, you can tell that he is a little bit misunderstood. Patrick's portrayal is just so interesting. Do you wanna... And yes, we have slightly changed position because the lighting shows violence and so I had to do this slightly. Anyway, let's get back on to talk about Judd. <laughs> He's a very three-dimensional character in this production. Every single acting choice that Veil makes really shows who Judd is. From his hunched over and slightly more internal body language, from the way that he speaks, from his position on stage, I think Everything tells you exactly who Judd is, and I love this. I think it's so interesting and such a brilliant portrayal, and I'm very scared I have mispronounced that surname the entire time. Then there's the more comedic pairing of Georgina Honora as Ado Annie, and James Patrick Davis as Will Parker. These two have such a wonderful chemistry on stage. At every moment that they have a scene, it is hilarious. Georgina brings the first act to life with her performance of I Can't Say No. It is genuinely spectacular performance and proves what a fantastic performer she is. And Davis really highlights the character of Will and the comedy of the script. And actually, I really enjoy his double act with the character of Ali, played by Stavros Dimitraki. These three have a really important job of breaking up the tension of the more dramatic scenes of the musical. And all three of them do a phenomenal job. They are hilarious. I think the fact that I am still thinking, I'm still talking to people and my friend that I saw Oklahoma with about this show proves its worth. I think that no matter what, no matter if you go into this loving it or hating it, loving the ideas or not really understanding it, I think it is impossible not to admire it. It is impactful, it is different, it is unlike anything I have seen before. Anything below four stars for Oklahoma would be a crime. It is a very, very, very high four stars. I think it is held back from the five stars just by a couple of the ideas not working for me personally, but when the ideas do, it is beyond anything else you will ever experience. If you were a fan of theatre, if you are studying theatre, I would highly recommend Oklahoma. I could speak for years 
about this musical. I could debate this musical and the way it uses theatrical stagecraft and techniques to really impact an audience. But what do you think? Have you seen this version of Oklahoma, either uh, on Broadway, uh, off West End, on tour, or even right now at the Wyndham Theatre? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. There's some links to my other videos on the screen right now, and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.